Okay. So, let us start. So, uh, uh, last class we have discussed about that the different acoustics parameters of the room liveness, clarity, blendingness, all those things we have discussed. And then uh, uh, we have discussed the how to calculate the reverberation time, mean free path, what is initial uh, time gap, initial signal delay and uh, uh, what should be the value, then percentage alcohol, all those things we have defined. Now, we go for a practical implementation which is auditorium acoustic. Suppose, you want to design an auditorium or you want to design an uh, lecture, lecture hall that who, who, uh, who, uh, who are doing that architectural business, they design that lecture hall. How should I design that lecture hall, so that acoustic is taken care? What are the parameters we should look for in case of acoustic treatment? So, there is a two kinds of thing. One is that there is a some architectural parameter for which we have to uh, we have to say that if I want a good acoustics, those architectural parameters should be like this. And then we have to provide a, a wide range of solution, or we can we have to provide a solution for acoustic treatment of the auditorium for better sound arrangement. Okay. So now we discuss one by one. Let's auditorium. It's called auditorium acoustics. So auditorium design has three three part. One is the room acoustics. How do you treat the acoustics of that inside the auditorium? Sound system, what kind of sound system I should use auditorium, so that that, uh, that ultimately aim is that in the auditorium, every, show, every seat of that auditorium should receive that equal amount of sound. That is the my ultimate objective. Okay. So, how to design that, what kind of sound system I should use, how it should be placed, all those things and then noise control how this my auditorium is free from external noise. If the external noise is entered in the auditorium, it hampers that auditorium acoustics because the environmental noise of the auditorium will be increased. So, which, which is uh, uh, distract that sound system of the auditorium. So, we have to free from that external sound source. So, that is called noise control. We have to control the noise of the auditorium, so that by external noise should not enter in the auditorium. So, one by one we discuss all that issue and then we will uh, at the end we will go for a design class. Then architectural contribution to auditorium design. What architectural do? Room shape is defined by the architecture, volume and dimension is defined by the architecture, layout of boundary surface is also defined by the architecture, surface treatment, audience capacity, seating arrangement all are the civil design parameters when the auditorium is designed initially, they are considered those are the parameters. Now, as an acoustic engineer, what kind of feedback you should provide to those to those architectural engineer that yes, look when you design an auditorium due to the acoustics point of view, room shape, volume of the room, this should be look like this. So, those guideline is called the acoustical guideline to the architectural design. Okay. So, let us one by one discuss room shape. So, the, what is the acoustical requirement? Okay. This before coming to the room shape, let us start. What is acoustical requirement in auditorium design? There should be adequate loudness in every part of the auditorium, particularly the remote seat. So, what is my requirement is that at the end seat, if some, some audience is sitting, his loudness of the uh, of that sound on that seat should be same as the loudness of the sound at the front seat. So, that then the design will be very good. So, I want there should be adequate loudness, means is that the last seat cannot hard if the sound level is reduced, that should not be happen. So, adequate loudness should be provided at uh, in the last seat also, so that last seat people can also hear that sound. So, re and the goal is that we should not waste the sound energy. So, reducing sound energy loss, how can we channelize the sound or how can we distribute the sound inside the whole auditorium is our goal. So, the auditorium should be safe, so that the audience is a close to the sound source as possible as thereby the reducing the distance from, the, from distance the sound must travel. What is it is meaning is that I want to design an auditorium, 
so that everybody has a feeling that he is sitting close to the stage because performance is happening on the stage so everybody should have a feeling that yes i am close to the stage what is the what is the acoustical effect suppose there is only loudspeaker is placed in the front uh, uh, front of the stage then the sitting and the large distance the direct sound will be less sitting in the front side front seat direct sound will be high so i i have to minimize the direct sound travel time to the last seat that means i have to minimize the distance from the seat stage to the each of the seat how do i minimize it suppose if i design the auditorium room that is the room shape if the design the auditorium is second case in this region so the centroid the average distance between the stage and the seat let's calculate it is this so d2 is the centroid see the, the, the d2 will be large compared to d1 if i place the audience like this way because that if this is a wide angle so the distance from the stage to the person is less so average distance will be reduced okay so everybody has a feeling that yes i am close to the stage now if you require a large capacity let's you have to require a design the length is very coming is very high then use the balcony to reduce the length use the balcony to reduce the uh, distance from the stage okay so there is some guideline in there then another one is that parallelism between the opposite sound reflecting boundary surface should be avoided to eliminate the that means it said that any auditorium must not be have any parallel reflector okay suppose i make this auditorium uh, or make this auditorium without this curve without this curve surface inside there is a see inside there is a curve surface if, if this curve surface is not there then this wall and this wall is parallel which effect which effect the sound quality okay which undesirable ref ref reflection will come and standing wave will be generated so to re to reduce that what i do yes this is a concrete wall no problem but i should make a inside arrangement such as the surface is curved see that inside surface is curved to avoid the parallelism between the two reflecting surface okay similarly i can do like this change that see the change the shape then it is parallelism is avoided or i can do like this way the design the auditorium like this way okay why this is that there is no parallel wall or if it is rectangular then inside the auditorium treat the wall such that it create a curved surface which is required then what should be the shape of the auditorium volume and dimension of the auditorium so shape of the auditorium is discuss that shape of the there should not be two parallel wall parallel uh, reflecting surface and the distance between the audience and stage must be minimized so for to do that what kind of arrangement is required you have to do that mostly this fan shape is used with balcony if i have to design a large capacity auditorium okay now volume and dimension the floor area and the volume of the auditorium should be kept as a reasonable reasonably minimum because unnecessary creating volume is not required and it is a architectural it is a civil construction cost also it reduce the sound energy so i have to minimize the volume sorting sorting the distance the sorting the distance stage and people so that distance should be minimized so two parameter optimum volume and optimum distance from the stage to the person is required for that i have to design the shape and then i have to design the volume and dimension of the auditorium what should be length width breadth all kind of things so its thumb rule is that in audience size floor area should be 6 to 8 square feet per seat if there is a 100 seat then 600 square feet to 800 square feet the floor area okay then recommended volume per seat 
it depends on the type of the auditorium it is for speech then it is said the minimum like the lecture theater it is 2.3 maximum 3.1 maximum 4.3 square feet per seat okay then 6.2 7.8 10.8 square feet per seat for a concert hall for a picture theater like cinema hall it is 2.8 3.5 is optimum minimum is 2.8 and maximum is 5.1 is sufficient for the lecture hall uh, for a picture theater means cinema hall so you know the volume and also the volume come from the large room acoustics the volume must be support the large room acoustics so that the mean suppose you can say the, okay i have to design an auditorium for the 10 people then the volume may be very small so that cannot support the large room acoustics then it i cannot design that large room acoustics design which is followed by an auditorium design for that kind of room then we have to go for the small room acoustic design okay so this is minimum volume per seat but thumb rule is that that volume should support the large room acoustics then ceiling height volume by floor area generally it is 20 into multiplication of the river percent time so it is volume i once i get the volume then divided by the floor area. So, floor area I get per seat, I get the volume per seat, I calculate the volume and floor area, then I get the ceiling height. Then typically the diamonds will come in the L length width and height is 2 h, length should be twice than the height, width should be 1.5 times of the height and height is h. So, if the height is 10 feet, let us 10 feet, then it should be 20 feet and 1 point uh, 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 2 times 1.5 times that means 15 feet and 10 feet, but the volume should support the large room acoustics. So, it may not be support the large room acoustics, so it cannot be a large room acoustics auditorium. So, minimum volume you have to say I have to design for 200 let us I have to design for 200 capacity auditorium. So, 200 people if I say the picture hall that means cinema hall then let us optimum value is 3.5. So, into 3.5 is the volume minimum volume which is required which is nothing but a 3.70 uh, into uh, 7 into 10 to the power. So, 700 square feet uh, feet square feet cube okay, or meter cube whatever is required. So, this is the minimum or the feet cube is required meter uh, not meter cube. So, this is the minimum volume is required. Okay. So, you know that then how to design that then uh, I get the ceiling height once I get the height I have to design the floor area so that will come in this almost come. Now, suppose in this formula if you length is very long suppose length is come 120 greater than 120 feet then what will happen it is it is increasing the direct sound distance. So, I have to reduce it how can I reduce it use the balcon if I use balcony the length will be reduced. So, I can use the balcony and stage opening should be this side. So, those are the basic parameter which is available from the literature and I have given you. Then layout of the surface how do I design the surface this is see that there is a no parallel curve and there is a ramping here and balcony also ramped. So, why the ramp is required? the sound shore must be raised as much as uh, feasible in order to secure the free flow of the direct sound. So, this is the one one criteria that if I want to put a loudspeaker in here we should not be put in below the stage it should be as raised as possible. So, that the direct sound has a direct link with that last seat of the balcony I have to see that that if I put the box in here let us I design an auditorium like this. And this is the balcony and I put the sound loudspeaker in here what will happen there is no direct sound to this seat. So, this will effect. So, I raise the loudspeaker in here so that sound is come here and here also okay, as, as much as possible. So, the direct sound reach the last seat of the balcony then another criteria if I if I place that all seat in flat. So, human being is a observer, observer of the sound. So, 
this man may foul the direct sound to the next man. So, direct sound cannot reach there. So, there is a ramping is required. This is also required for viewing in viewing side also. So, there is a ramping is required, but this ramping has an limitation. I cannot ramp my auditorium like this. Okay. So, I ramp it 1 is to 8 in ratio. So, if the length is 8 feet, then the ramp last seat ramp should be 1 feet. If length is 100 feet, 1 is to 8 ratio, I have to ramp it. So, I ramp it. Then, how do you, how do, how do you arrange the seating? Seating pattern, how do you arrange the seat? If I arrange a seat, suppose I put a seat in here and next seat in here, then what will happen? The direct the, this man foul the direct sound to the next man. So, instead of doing that, you can make the seat arrangement like this picture. This man is sitting in gap between this two seat. So, there is a possibility the direct sound will be go there. Okay. So, this kind of seating pattern must be maintained. Then the sound source should be closely and close. So, okay, like the, this one, I do not don't I do not want to read the slide. What is said that that suppose I put a extra sound sound source in the wall or in the stage, wherever I put the sound source, it should be covered by a reflector or its sound source should be put in such area where the sound is reflecting, so that it reinforce the sound, uh, reflection sound in the room. Okay. So, if I, pull, uh, I have put an acoustic blanket in back side and then put a sound source, what will happen? The If I put an acoustic blanket in here, so let us 100 percent absorptive, if I put a sound source here, so the so sound which is supposed to come this side and reflected back to this side to increase the directivity will be absorbed. So, directivity cannot be 2, it comes 1, because the back side sound is absorbed instead of reflected into the front side, so that it reflected sound can travel to the audience, it is absorbed. So, if I put a loudspeaker in back side, if I required, then loudspeaker should be surrounded by a sound reflector, so that the reflection of the sound should reach to the audience. Okay. Next, time delay, this is very important, we have to think about that at least initial reflection should the audience should be reached within the 30 millisecond, which is nothing but a direct sound is d distance, then in r sound is uh, reflected sound is the r 1 plus r 2. So, r 1 plus r 2 minus d divided by 0 0.35, so this is the distance be time time gap between the direct sound and first reflection, it should be within the 30 millisecond. Okay. So, how do you do it? So, the surface of the auditorium, if I say that uh, or, the, or, the, or the top of the auditorium, the top surface of the auditorium must be not like a just plain ceiling. If I put a plain ceiling, what will happen? If I in top of the auditorium is just plain ceiling, then it is not, it will not create that equal reflection to all part of the auditorium. Instead of top ceiling, if I make a curved ceiling, I put a reflector in curved surface or suppose my ceiling is flat, but I can put a reflector to make a curve, so that the reflection can happen in everywhere. Okay. So, unless what will happen? This reflection does not have a meaning, because if I want that that is again reflected by the back surface and come to here, it may hard as a echo. So, this reflection, because back side will be treated as an acoustic blanket, so this will not reinforce the sound system. So, what I will do? I will make a curve reflector in the top ceiling, so that it reflects the sound. Okay. Unless the ceiling height is very high, always put reflector in the ceiling. If the ceiling height is very high, then what will happen? From the ceiling, reflection may create an echo. So, to avoid that echo, in that case I require a treatment of like the total absorptive surface in the ceiling, so that there is no reflection come from the ceiling, if it is too high. If it is not that high, like that it, it, there is a possibility to harden echo, 
I can put a sound reflector there so that it reinforces the reverberant sound. Okay, so that kind of treatment I have to make. Now there is a thumb rule of the surface treatment of the auditorium. So near the stage, it should be reflective so that maximum energy is channelized to the audience. So stage should be reflective or near the stage and stage should be reflective. Next stage, middle portion should be diffusive means there should be a irregular reflection from the surface, not regular reflection. If it is regular reflection, then what kind what will happen? The some area will be focused and some area will be defocused. So I want diffusive treatment after the stage after the front part of the stage, let us that uh, up to maybe uh, few hundred few feet that there will be a reflective surface. Then next portion is diffusive surface and last portion should be absorptive. Why? Because if the length is long enough, then I there may be a chance that I can harden echo. To avoid that, the last portion of the auditorium must be as much as absorptive, so that the reflection sound intensity is very low, so that the echo is avoided. So, when you design an auditorium, the acoustic treatment of the auditorium is reflective in the stage and front part of the auditorium, middle part of the auditorium will be diffusive and rare part of the auditorium or the last part, rare part of the auditorium should be as possible as absorptive, so that no sound should be reflected from that area. Okay. So, that is the thumb rule for acoustic treatment in any auditorium. If you visited any good auditorium, you found that front stage is stage, front part of the stage are made of a polished wood and some channel. So, the channel create an diffusive reflection and it is a reflective glazy. So, glazy means reflection coefficient is very high. There is no acoustic style is placed on the front part of the stage or few person after stage there is a few few meters or you can one or three meters there will be all reflective surface. Then next part is diffusive. So, there is a acoustic diffuser is placed as we discussed in the last class the acoustic diffuser how to uh, how do you know that you know that acoustic diffuser is a regular surface and you know what, what kind of acoustic diffuser is available in the markets you can go to the market and see that what kind of acoustic diffuser. So, the diffusive surface not regular surface if I make a wall of the auditorium painted glazy painted in the surface then what will happen it create a regular reflection. So, that is why auditorium inside the auditorium you do not find that except stage part that there is a glazy surface which can produce a regular reflection. There is a reflector, but it is diffuse reflector that means it create an irregular reflection. So, instead of plain painted wall we use a rough wall kind of things to provide a diffuse reflection. Okay. So, there is a material provide a surface irregularity random alternative. So, I can see there is a some moral if you see in visit in auditorium sometimes this is the front part of the stage there is a some moral. Since moral has an uneven surface it can act as a diffuse reflection and moral is painted then the absorbity of the moral is very less. So, front part of the stage is reflective. So, I can do some moral or wooden work in the front part of the stage. If you visit in our here Kalidas auditorium you see the front part is made painted wooden design. So, it is a irregular diffuse design, but it is a reflection coefficient is much higher. So, that it reflects the maximum energy. But after that, we put some acoustic styles, which is an acoustic diffuser, so that it, it create a diffuse reflection. But in the rare part of the auditorium, we should treat total absorptive. That means the material, which absorption coefficient is very high, should be put in the rare part of the auditorium. Now. The room must maintain optimum reverberation characteristic, the reverberation time must allow favorable reception and efficient presentation. So, I cannot say that okay, I make a 
auditorium whose reversion time is very less and whose reversion time is very high both are problematic. So, I have already sent you give you a slides where I said that different kind of purpose of the auditorium if it is purpose is peace theater, if it is purpose is concert hall what should be the optimum reverberation side time that there is a chart available from the architectural design side. Okay. Then the room should be free from acoustical defect such as echo, long delay reflection, sound concentration and coupled space. That means, what is the meaning? When I get an echo, if the delay between the direct sound and reverberation sound is much high, then there is a possibility that I heard an echo. So, suppose my room has an long distance, long, long end room, if the end reflection come to me, then I may heard as an echo. Then what, can, what I do? At the end part of the auditorium, I must put absorptive material, so that the maximum sound energy is absorbed by the surface. So, the reflection sound intensity is very low, then I can avoid that echo, the echo will be not there or I can change the shape. If you see the shape of the rear part, if I design a auditorium ceiling such that, the no sound energy can receive here and or the minimum sound energy will be reached in that last portion of the auditorium, then I can tap that end part. So, the volume of the rear part is reduced to reduce the number of reflection. Okay. Then I can make a rear wall acoustic blanket kind of arrangement, so that even if the reflection is come, it totally absorbs. Even if the direct sound is fall on that wall, it is totally absorbed. So, if you visit any auditorium, you should see the end wall or the, the rear wall of the auditorium will be treated with an acoustic blanket or a material which has high absorbability. Okay. If the primary sound source which is normally located in the front part of the auditorium, so suppose I want to put, you can read the slide, I am not reading the slide. So, suppose you want to put an extra loudspeaker in the in the auditorium. So, as I mentioned, when I put the extra loudspeaker, I should put with a reflective surface, so that the sound energy of the loudspeaker is reflected back to the auditorium. Okay. So, I put a reflective surface. Noise, external noise is very important. Suppose, you are creating a AC dark in the auditorium, you should very cautious that acoustic with the through the acoustic dark external sound should not enter in the auditorium. So, there is within the dark also you require an acoustic treatment, so that external noise is avoided through the AC dark also. And also you have to see suppose I build an auditorium beside a highway, what will happen? The sound the highway sound will be there is a vibration conduct sound will be there, conduct sound means say let us you uh, put that wall thick, so that the external sound not enter the auditorium, then you put a acoustic blanket after that, then, then you put the acoustic reflector. So, the inside sound is reflected back, but outside sound cannot enter, because there is acoustic blanket and there is a uh, brick wall, we, uh, we, if you have heard about the intensity, transmitted intensity is inversely proportional to the L square. So, I can if the uh, length of that uh, wall is increases, then the very rare sound intensity will be entered in the auditorium. So, I can say that I, yes, I can make that arrangement, so that highway noise is in not entered, but if it is totally concrete to the highway, what will happen? The vibration conduct vibration conduct noise conduction noise will come out. So, to avoid that, that I should make an arrangement, so that that auditorium is separated from that conduction. So, I can make a channel outside the auditorium and put a sand there. So, it acts as an absorber and the direct sound will not come. Similarly, in the floor, how do you treat a floor of the auditorium? You, saw, you found the generally the auditorium floor is carpet. Why? Because we, we want that there is a two kind of things. If it is not glossy surface, there will be a reflection from the surface. Okay. So, that audience also create a noise, that noise also reflected. Okay. So, I want the auditorium that uh, the diffuse, see, 
see the I required a diffuse uh, diffuser in the middle portion. So, instead of providing a middle portion only uh, uh, blanket, I provide whole auditorium is a soft acoustic carpet. So, that 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 reflection sound does not come, but the stage I require a reflective surface. So, I can make a con uh, concrete stage with a high reflection uh, high reflective coefficient or the front of the stage also I can make a high reflective coefficient. So, I can make a concrete uh, uh, concrete on that that area which is a high high reflective coefficient, but in the rare part in the floor also has to be treated as a either diffusive and the uh, uh, sorry in the rare part it the, the I have to treat that floor also whose absorption coefficient is very high. So, that is nothing but a carpet. Okay. So, there is an example Okay, do not forget about that. There is an example I have given in here. Say that I think it is not visible. So, let us I make it large. What I said that an auditorium has in the following specification design it acoustic treatment. What is there? I given a table people and affold seed quantity I have not vacant seat. So, there is a all absorption coefficient is given in table 1 absorption coefficient of a vacant seat and absorption coefficient vacant seat is 0.3 and if it is people occupy it is 0.4. Then wall in diffusive module and space between the module and ceiling the surface area is given area of floor without seat rare interior wall rare ceiling surface area is given absorptive ceiling on side wall ceiling reflector, stage front wall, diffusive side wall, stage floor, stage side wall. Then I said write the material name, which kind of material you should acoustic material you should use to treat this area. So, what I said thumb rule is that stage area must be reflective. So, when I design when I said the stage front wall, I should use the material whose absorption coefficient as low as possible. Suppose, architecture said me those are the material I want to use in that uh, auditorium. So, I can say that see that with fiber cement board absorption coefficient is very low. So, I can use that in stage front wall, stage floor is there anything floor, floor hard wood I can use in stage floor, painted concrete. I can use in the stage side wall. So, all those things, so reflective part I design. Then, if you see the rare ceiling and rare interior wall, rare part of the auditorium must be as much as possible absorptive. So, I have to see which material has a large absorption coefficient acoustic blanket, wood fiber board. So, I can say acoustic blanket I can use in the rare interior wall and rare ceiling I can use wood fiber board. So, depending on the choice aesthetic I can choose the material from the market and treat that area, but thumb rule is that stage area must be as reflective as possible, middle area must be as diffusive as possible and rare part must be as absorptive as possible. So, you put that material name in here, then you know that absorption coefficient multiply by the quant uh, surface area, you get the absorption in 7, then add them to get the total 7, then you can calculate the reverberation time if the volume is given, number of sheet is given. So, acoustic volume, so it is not meter square, it is a meter cube, sorry, it is a meter cube not square. Okay. So, volume is given, A is given. So, reverberation time is equal to 0 0.161 into V by A, V known A known. Then I estimate the reverberation time. Suppose, the architecture said that I my auditorium should be reverberation time should be 1.22, let us 1.5 second. Then after calculation I found it is coming 1.1. So, I have to readjust the material and decrease A. 
so that reverberation time is increased. So, front wall part, front part of the stage, I can use other material which has absorption coefficient is much lower. If it is much lower, then the A will be suppose 0 0.001 S into 0 0.01 S into 0 0.001, then A will be less in here. Okay. So, a much reflective surface I will be used. So, then I just changing the A, I find out the desired T, then my design is done. So, I need to do a design of an auditorium, two things, one is that consultants give a consultant to the architectural engineer that I require this kind of shape, because if it shape is not this kind, then I cannot auditorium acoustics will be not good. I require this kind of seat, seat arrangement, I require this kind of ceiling volume, this minimum volume should be this, I require this kind of ceiling arrangement, this kind of ramping and this kind of seat arrangement, all things you can con give that suggestion, this are the desired for a good acoustics. Then you know the surface area, then design is done you know the surface area, then the design, then the user said I require a reverberation time 1.2 to 1.5, then you have to choose the material, which portion you want to treat by which kind of material, acoustic material. So, there is a thumb rule is that reflective, diffusive, absorptive. So, that is thumb rule, you cannot put a glaze style on the rear wall, because then the echo will hard in that auditorium. So, rear side has to be absorptive. Now, you adjust the material depending on the aesthetic, aesthetic part is also very important. So, depending on the aesthetic and reverberation time, you adjust the material and design that material. And also, there is another one work, work is there, you should also give an advice that what kind of sound isolation is required in inside the auditorium. Outside noise sound should not enter in the auditorium. So, there should be suppose. I make an auditorium and there is a glass window. Can it be possible? No. If it is a glass window, then outside noise should come into the auditorium. I cannot avoid that ambient noise. So, ambient noise will be increases. So, that is avoided. Now, once I want to design a door, I just simply flash door. The door. If the door is flash door, then outside noise is come inside. So, I have to treat the door also in acoustic treatment, so that the outside noise should not enter when the door is closed. So, I have to design the door also, I have to choose the material when, where the, I have to design the door such a that, that outside intensity, sound intensity should not enter in the room. You know that, how the sound intensity is travel through the, through the material, if there is a true boundary, then you know that, that it is depend on the L thickness, suppose there is no thickness, thickness is possible thickness separation is not possible. I cannot make the door so thick. So, what I will do? I make a air gap inside the door or I make a may put a acoustic blanket in middle middle of the door. I, I make a two two kind of wooden uh, wooden plate and then make a acoustic blanket here. Then the sound transmission will be reduced. So, that kind of consultancy you have to provide to the engineer. So, this is the auditorium design. Let us try a design of this kind of auditorium kind of things, real part. Then if you have any query, then you ask me, then if I know, I will answer it. Okay? Thank you.